Well, Jim, things are looking up. This is a fun addition so far. Let's uh, quickly do something that's become a popular uh, semi-recurring segment. I have some retro wrestling figures that have arrived, and some of them have finishing maneuvers for you to guess. Uh-oh, guess the finishing maneuver. Brunch. I have the latest uh, several figures from Hastel Toys. That's a mix of Hasbro and Mattel. Hastel Toys. At least they're, they're not hostile. They're the ones who put out the uh, fellas with a purpose set of figures. <laughs> this one, the artist known as Savio Vega, Juan Rivera. A Juan Rivera action figure in the classic WWE Hasbro style. What would his finishing maneuver be named? Um, oh God, um, I'm trying to think what he really called it in real. I've, I've completely drawn a blank. It would be the Boricua beatdown. Okay. Then that's just something they made up because he didn't call it the Boricua beatdown. Yeah. I don't know if any of these guys called these, uh, any of the moves. Let's well, now remember Ming had the Tongan death grip. That, that was actually a different toy line, though, that had ah, that one. Oh, see, now you change your story. Well, here I have another one from Hastel Toy. This is the new Mark Canterbury action figure in the, I uh, can't call him Henry O'God one, Hank the Farmer. Oh, God, no. No, they don't call him that. I'm calling him that. <laughs> but the new Mark Canterbury action figure in the classic Henry O'Godwin uh, garb. What do you think his finishing maneuver would be? Well, couldn't they couldn't they say something like, you know, hog farmer Hank or something where they got the hog in there? They have a bucket. He comes in a little bucket. And a bucket. A bucket, Mr. Creosote. Um, it's gotta be the slop drop, doesn't it? That was what it was, wasn't it? That was what it was. This is the farm flattener. <laughs> The farm flattener. Ladies. Well, you know, most farms are pretty flat. You don't see a lot of cornfields on the side of a mountain. Uh, finally, I have, uh, well, finally from the Hastel Toy uh, line of uh, grapplers and gimmicks, the new Dennis Knight action figure known as Phineas Godwin. And he was Shanghai Pierce, right? The other one was Tex yes. Lassinger. Yes. The new Dennis Knight action figure, what would he, and it comes with a pig. <laughs> Comes with, well, comes with a free pig. What would his finishing maneuver be? Wait a minute, is it a little plastic pig? It's a little plastic pig. A little plastic pig. I assume, I haven't opened this, so I assume it's... What would, what would Penis Godwin's finish? It, well, it was, it was the slop drop also, but have they, have they used that for... Are they allowed to use that again, or would he be the... They didn't use it last time. The, 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 the pig porker. Oh, well, almost close. Almost close. The pig pen punch. The pig pen punch. <laughs> the pig pen punch. What'd you think of uh, Tex and Shanghai or uh, Phineas and Henry? Well, they were great guys and they were victimized by Vince's obsession with doing gimmicks at that point from his childhood that he hadn't outgrown yet. He was doing the scuffling hillbillies from 1959, but he was not. He's not in any way trying to update him. Like, he, would, he wasn't making Henry and Phineas, you know, militant fucking farmers pissed off about the state of the farming industry and the family farm coming out to fucking blood on a scarecrow or something. It was still the scuffling hillbillies from 1959 with a bucket of slop and a pig. They had Hillbilly Jim for a while, too. Yeah, and, and Hillbilly Jim and Uncle Elmer you know, Plowboy and all of that in the 80s was Vince's flashback to the Scufflin' Hillbillies. And there were certain gimmicks that he couldn't, it's not that he couldn't get over, he loved them or had a soft spot for them or just understood them that way. And he was going to do it in every generation. All right, I have another, uh, let me pick this up. There's no finishing maneuver here, but we're going to end with this. <laughs> The uh, Zombie Sailor line of toys, the Zombie Sailor line of wrestling heels and faces. I don't remember him. What promotion did he work for, the Zombie Sailor? I don't believe he worked for promotion, but he has a line of toys. I have to say, amongst all the toys, these may be the most impressive in look and feel and uh, just overall, these are incredibly impressive. The new Bastion Booger 
action figure. Now, of course, that is a name owned by WWE or TKO Group. They can't call him Bastion Booger. What do you think they called him? Uh, the, the Snot Man. Mike Booger Shaw. <laughs> Mike Booger Shaw. Mike Booger Shaw. Poor Mike. <laughs> and that, and by the way, that was another one that Vince took personal interest in and glee because he loved the music of the belches and the fart noises and the sloppy eating that Bastion Booger would come to the ring accompanied by. And and how old was Vince 30 years ago? He was still a fucking almost a 50-year-old man, and that's yeah. he just loved that shit. He couldn't get enough of it. <laughs> Upcoming figures include Jack Tunney, Slick, the One Man Gang with Real Denim, Hercules Hernandez and Paul Roma, Power and Glory, as well as with, a with real cocaine. <laughs> As well as they just put out a new Andre the Giant, and uh, they have another one about to come out. I have to say, these are incredibly impressive toys. Uh, or I don't know if you're not allowed to call them toys. Adult collectibles. Yeah. 